Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. If you're a project manager and you've ever thought at the end of a project, if I'd known then what I know now, I'd have done things differently, then you'll appreciate that everything seems clearer and easier with hindsight. But generating your own hindsight is hard and often painful. George Bernard Shaw said, if history repeats itself and the unexpected always happens, how incapable man must be of learning from experience. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's experience and especially from sharing their scars. Sharing experiences gives you access to somebody else's hindsight without the hard work and the pain. So as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf, I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Susie Palmer True, who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Susie, I'd like you, if you can, to start by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. Of course. Um, so I started project management, like many people, by mistake. I was working at Lancaster University Student Union at the time, and the director of facilities asked me to do him a favour. He wanted me to do a piece of work that looked at bringing different areas of the university together to think about how we could treat estates and facilities um, from a people point of view rather than a, a process point of view. Um, I didn't realise at the time what he was actually asking me to do was to deliver a, a project. Um, from that point, we continued to work together and I took on a role as an assistant project manager. So I worked with the great and the good to do some relatively small stuff, but at the time felt quite big and, and, and overwhelming. And from then I realised I actually had a knack for project management, both the doing and the thinking sides of it. So I uh, did a master's in project management mm -hmm. and then my career sort of took off from that. So I've worked in construction, IT, systems and, and process changes and I've done a lot of strategy delivery, uh, predominantly in higher education. So I'm currently head of portfolio PMO and change at the Open University, which is a a hell of a job title. Certainly um, so I am responsible for our major change portfolio. So that is all of our projects and programmes with significant change and impact to our staff and students. I'm responsible for our PMO function, so a traditional uh, programme management office, but we cover all, all of the P's, so, so nobody is safe. <laughs> and then change in terms of our change capability, our approach, our appetite and our capacity to do so. So my role is relatively broad, um, but I've got a phenomenal team, so it makes it quite easy. Okay, so thinking back over your career, um, can you share with us an example of a scar, so something that went wrong on a project that you were managing and how you recovered from it? Yeah, of course. So this is a, a quite an old story and it probably feels quite quite simple when I, when I tell it, but it was one of my first projects mm -hmm. and I was working with a, a team of people to help take a building down as part of a, a renovation piece of work. The work itself uh, wasn't my responsibility, so somebody else had the joy of actually knocking the building down. Right. I had to make sure the people weren't there on the day that it was due to fall. And we agreed that we would move them out for the summer period, mm -hmm. and they would spend some, some time away. We would deal with the building, then we would move them back. I worked with our conference team to arrange an, a new location and, and to create the bookings and make sure that we had all the bums on seats in the right places. Um, and I made the booking with them to cover the, the, the summer. Uh, we were probably about four or five weeks into the summer term at the university and the conference team said your guys are due to move out next week aren't they at which point I had that sinking feeling of we've got another eight weeks before the building's finished nobody can go anywhere um, and that was when I realized what I had done right. so I had made the assumption that everybody knew what summer was so okay. in a university, a traditional university, they work across three terms. So you have uh, Michaelmas, Lent, and then summer term. Um, so the conferencing team had accepted my summer booking to be the summer term, which was right. a 10-week period, whereas my expectation for summer was through until the start of the Michaelmas term, which was in September, end of September, early October. So my assumption that they understood my requirements and my expectations meant that I fell relatively quickly wow. out, out of grace and that I didn't have a place to put these people. How many people? Uh, there was about 25 of them. Okay. There was no of them to go. We had contractors due on site. The building that they had come from was, was no longer usable. Mm -hmm. We needed a new, a new home for them. Quickly. And, <laughs> yes, very, very quickly. <laughs> and, and that was where I think I saw the good stuff and what people could do when they worked together. So, working with colleagues in the conferencing team, the people that I had ultimately made the mistake on their behalf, and those people around us, both my mentors in terms of my, my senior staff and my colleagues, but also people who had made mistakes before, because yeah. there is a, an instant empathy 
and a willingness for people to succeed when they realise that you've just done what you've just done. How old were you at the time? I am um, 21. And um, so I was fresh, you know, I, yeah. to be honest, you know, I thought I knew why, you know, I could do it all. I didn't need anyone's help. I'd gone very much in gung-ho yeah. thinking I could do this because my friends were in the conference centre, my friends were the people that were yeah. moving and I'd put too much onus on assuming that I'd get away with it. Yes. And, and ultimately, I, I wasn't getting away with it. <laughs> So what did you do? So we, we, we worked with the conferencing team and the empty academic space that we had and we were able to move the staff into a new location for the, the remaining period that we had. So the, the solution was good. Um, it was hard work to get there because I had to get it out, get us out of that situation ourselves. So it was myself, um, a very, very good friend called Stephen who worked in the conference team at the time. We physically moved these members of staff out on our own one evening. So our portrait team moved their desks but we moved every box file, every coat, every handbag, every pen pot, and we must have done probably a hundred trips between the offices that they were in and the offices that were they were going to, and never have I felt more broken than mm. that last trip up the stairs. Um, but we, we did it and we, we made the change, and when people came into the office on Monday, the offices were set up, they were how they needed to be, and they were able to function, but not through good planning, mm. through, a really simple small mistake based on assumption. So what did you learn from that then? What would you recommend that other people do in that situation or, or to avoid getting into that situation? The thing that resonates with me now is, is assumption is the killer of so many things and it normally happens when the thing you're dealing with is very simple. So when you don't dot that I or cross that T, yeah. that's when you're likely to make a mistake. It's not when you're gonna make the big decisions because big decisions come with scrutiny. Yeah. They come with heavy controls. They normally come with somebody else checking that you're okay or that you're doing it. But as soon as you get down to the granularity of work packages or a small activity in a work stream, all eyes lift off. And it's in that moment when everybody's looking at the new shiny thing to the left that they forget or they assume that the small thing is going to be okay. And that's the biggest lesson for me, and it's what I always say to our, our new project managers and our junior project managers, is start with a little guy. Because if you can get that foundation right, and you can get that foundation that's built on strong knowledge, good data, having learnt from projects that have gone before, you're going to get off on the right foot. And if you get off on the right foot, there is a higher chance that you will finish on the right foot. And you will not have to do 100 trips between one office and another office to, to pull it off. So being open to challenge, inviting challenge, asking people to test you on your ideas, not just running off into the sunset because you think you're right. Mm -hmm. um, and not forgetting that it's the small detail, um, which is where can, you can really come unstuck. Susie, thanks for your time, your openness and your insights. So today we've heard from Susie about something that went wrong, how she recovered from it and what she learned from it. Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes. To me, that means that although the future is never exactly like the past, it is often similar enough for the lessons to be useful. So my challenge to you is what will you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Susie's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both or sharing it with others on social media. If enough people think these videos are worthwhile, I'll make more of them. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.